One thing that I feel Resident Evil 7 has done right is nerfing the protagonist. No more dodging bullets and explosions, no more flipping unnecessarily out of windows, and no more boulder punching. No more boulder punching. You're an average Joe, a typical nobody, so threats that should be a threat will remain a threat. But every now and then Resident Evil 7 forgets that rule. Now don't get me wrong, Resident Evil 7 has done a fantastic job, but some things still come off as a bit unrealistic. So here's five ways you should have died in Resident Evil 7. Some spoilers ahead, your only warning. So I feel I should start this list off with the obvious. A fucking heart attack. With all the things that go bump in the night, it's an understatement to say that there are only a few jump scares in the game. If Resident Evil 7 got anything right, it's atmosphere. Where do you think you're going? With dark scary hallways come jump scares. It's the golden rule of survivor horror games, whether you like it or not. And that's not to mention the other atrocities that lurk around the Baker property. Whether the effects are immediate or not, the stress can't be any good for you. With probably PTSD to boot. Look, after the things you have to deal with, you'd be lucky if you retain the same mentality. After being stalked around the house by this monstrosity, eventually you will have your showdown with them. But before we get there, I want to show you a few clips to show you exactly what you're dealing with. Okay, so after that, do you seriously want to go head to head with this beast of a man? I assume your answer is a Oh hell no! Because if it's anything other than a Oh hell no! Then let's just hope the rule of survival of the fittest doesn't come into play anytime soon. He's already made it clear, guns don't do shit. At least not enough firepower doesn't do shit. And let's assume you go head first like in the game anyways because you have Balls of Steel. Okay, I get it. But then good old Jack pulls this puppy out. Now wait, I want you to fully appreciate this. It looks like what seems to be a chainsaw rigged into a giant pair of scissors. A chainsaw rigged into a giant pair of scissors. Are you fucking kidding me? It's like the scissor man from Clock Tower and Leatherface had a child, except it's their weapons, but whatever. And then somehow we get chainsaw clashing. Look, this scene is pretty badass at this point, but no, no, no way. This motherfucker has incredible inhuman strength, and you're telling me you can keep up with him? He's like Hercules on steroids. As far as I'm concerned, you're dead right here. Once you leave the main building, you head into the old house and discover that the house is infected. But by what, you ask? No. Nope. Uh-uh. Psych. You wish. Worse than that, trust me. What's worse than bees? Fucking wasp! And how do I know that they're wasps and not bees? Well, you can identify a wasp by the lack of hair, dangling legs, and the fact that they're fucking assholes. There you go, you learned something today. Wasps are fucking assholes. Not to mention, I, I don't even know what the fuck these things are. Just stay away from them. I'm pretty sure that these two combined could kill a man pretty easily. Pretty damn painful death at that. God, it's making me squeamish just making this damn video. But hey, at least they're not giant fucking spiders or snakes or whatever the fuck Resident Evil wants to throw at us. There's a lot to explain for this one, but I'll try and make it quick. Sorry if it sounds a little confusing, but at one point in the game, you're put in this saw-like scenario, meaning that you're put in a pre-setup environment and you'll have to do some puzzle solving and maybe a little excruciating and bearable pain for your survival. But luckily for you, you've seen this part played out before via pre-recorded VHS tape that you've watched before you arrived, or at least you should. Now don't get me wrong, I really love and appreciate this part, but how the hell did this guy record all of this? Look, his hands are tied, so it's not like he's holding the camera. Or maybe he's got some undercover espionage-like spy shades on, which is kind of funny to imagine him being dragged down the hall while he's wearing one of those. But what I'm saying is, the only reason you survived this part is solely based on the fact that you've seen this tape, a tape that shouldn't exist in the first place. So this one wouldn't happen too much as during the game, so much as after the fact. It's safe to say that everything in this house is 
pretty atrocious. I mean, that's even an understatement. <clears throat> Sorry, hold on. <clears throat> okay, in a fair amount of this repulsive things you find, guess what? You're gonna have to put your hands in. I mean, seriously, the imagery in this game, oh my god. Sets the bar pretty high for other games, huh? I'll, I'll try not to vomit. Woohoo, fun times. But infections are a huge factor as well. The biggest example is your hand being hacked off by your wife with a chainsaw. And then sloppily stitched back together. Science. Seriously, how does that even work? Let me go over a few other risks. Explosion to the face. Knife to the face. Self-injected needles you found laying around. Deadly car crash. Multiple upon multiple infected wasp things. Spider bites. Being stabbed through the leg. Lifted in the air by said leg. And being dropped from a distance that should have killed you. Twice. And here your guy is just taking all of it. Pretty goddamn brutal. And a little badass. But brutal. Resident Evil 7 has finally caved in the fan demand, returning back to its horror roots, the thing that made it what it is today. And personally, I'm really glad that it happened this way. Resident Evil 7 is a really good game, and if you're a fan of survivor horror, you definitely have to give this one a try. And I hear that the VR version is really terrifying, I have not been able to give it a chance yet, but I definitely must sometime in the future. Most of the game, it doesn't really feel like Resident Evil, only more towards the end. And once you play, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I haven't really gave too much opinions on the game in this video, and I'll probably do a separate video about that, maybe a ZF review. But this is a solid entry. Thanks for watching, you guys. I really appreciate it if you gave it a like, and if you want to see more of it, you should subscribe. I mean, why not? It takes virtually no effort, and it's a lot to me. And really quick, I started a second channel, one for going back to Let's Play, so if you enjoyed me doing Let's Plays before, please go check out that channel, but the channel is fairly new, it'll probably only have a few videos at this point, but go show that channel some support if you, if you enjoyed my more early videos. Anyways guys, thank you for watching, I'll catch you next time.